Open your cerebral cortex and shift your lobes into upper beta phase because you are going to have Bitcoin knowledge transmitted directly into your vestibulocochlear. Your host at Bitcoin Knowledge is Trace Mayer, an early Bitcoin advocate since it cost a quarter, but this is not intended to be investment advice. A doctor of jurisprudence, but this is definitely not legal advice. And an investor in core cryptocurrency infrastructure, including Armory, BitPay, Kraken, and Mitagio, but this is not a recommendation of those services. Here, you get fed via direct mind download with pure and free Bitcoin knowledge. Welcome back to the Bitcoin Knowledge Podcast. This is our uh, weekly update for October 11th through October 17th. And we have with us today Steve Michaels, who's going to be uh, organizing and putting on the BitcoinInvestor.com uh, conference that's going to be happening in Las Vegas in two weeks, October 28th and 29th. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me, Trace. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the uh, you know the fundamentals that happened this week. Uh, like what... We we had Gemini. What else happened? So yeah, a lot a lot of neat things happening around. Of course, uh, Gemini. We had the uh, Overstock news that just uh, uh, did another loan using their uh, their uh, open assets protocol on the to dot com. And uh, what else did happen to, uh, this week? Uh, Blockstream sidechain went into live yeah. production. Yeah, that's exciting. So so yeah, we can talk about. Yeah, about can you all explain that a little bit? Like, what is this sidechain that Blockstream's implemented? Sure, you bet. Well, uh, I believe this one's called Liquid. Is that right, or uh-huh. something like that? And uh, I am definitely not the expert in this area, but. Um, what I'm excited about is the fact that they actually have a working model. Now, uh, granted that it's not the uh, the true decentralized uh, system, it's more of a tool for exchanges. And uh, But it's nice to see that now we have something that will be working and, and it'll be a good testing ground in a way that, uh, that that I think it can help us all get a really good look and see how this is going to work. So. Yeah, I was actually at a, a special event for Ripple. Uh, last week, and you know they're going over a lot of the correspondent banks and the clearing and like a lot of these problems that the current system has. And it looks like Liquid, uh, this new blockchain uh, blockstream sidechain, is going to be solving a lot of these issues because a lot of the big exchanges are already signed up and ready to use it, like Bitfinex, Kraken, ANX, I think a few others. And you're basically going to be able to instantly transfer your balances among all the different exchanges. So that'll that'll open up all types of arbitrage opportunities and whatnot. Right. And and, and I think what's exciting about that is that'll stabilize the price a little bit as well amongst exchanges. And, um, and then the fact that no single exchange will have full control over those coins, at least the Bitcoin side, so it, it's kind of a, a, an interesting uh, a shared uh, um, uh, key structure, I guess. And so uh, at least that's my understanding. Yeah, anyway. using multi, it's a multi-sig side chain. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So uh, How does that I think like that's, blow up the mine. <laughs> that's kind of cool, yeah. So, so I, I'm very excited to see how this starts to uh, develop and materialize. And, and uh, we'll see, I think we will see the arbitragers step in and, um, and you won't see as much disparity in prices across exchanges. And, of course, if you do, then, of course, that's a flag that there's probably something else wrong with that exchange. Yeah, exactly. Um, we're also 40 weeks away from the block reward happening, which I think is getting uh, pretty pretty interesting, pretty big. And the price is broken out. We're at 265 a Bitcoin. I wonder if this long bear market is finally over. Um, and then, of course, remember, remember the 5th of November, we've got, <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that funny? It's like they did it on purpose. Uh, the Silk Road, the final, the final batch of coins, 44,000 plus Bitcoins from, uh, seized from Silk Road are being auctioned by the marshals. And so that's, it makes me wonder if this run up in the price is in anticipation of this auction since it's so hard to acquire large blocks of Bitcoin. Right. And, and you would think that would be uh, counterintuitive. You'd think a, a big uh, amount of supply coming onto the market would have a depressing effect on the price. And so I think it just speaks to the to the uh, demand in the marketplace. And uh, yeah, I think we are seeing a turnaround here. And of course, we don't know what will happen, but it sure feels good. Yeah, because I mean, we're the 50 day moving average is at two hundred and thirty seven dollars and 10 cents. The 200 day moving average, which 
is the one I really like to look at personally because 200 days you're gonna you're gonna shake out all the daily fluctuations and effects and you're gonna see what the real long term trend is. That's at 245 dollars and 60 cents. You know, it's trending up, um, and now we're at 265 in anticipation of a major dump of coins by the marshals. Uh, and I guess it, you know, the, the smart money is able to make money when it goes up, when it goes down, when it stays neutral. And, you know, the way you make, the way you establish a position, you have to accumulate at the bottom of these bear markets. You know, you you have to be accumulating Bitcoins and now we're seeing, you know, a big block come up and the price jumps twenty, thirty dollars Yeah, that's, it's funny you mentioned that because, um, you know, I think this, you know, two year bear market that we've been in and the price of Bitcoin has really shook out a lot of the, the, the fair weather traders and the fair weather investors in Bitcoin. And the, those who, uh, who, uh, actually have a solid, um, call it a belief or a, a conviction in, in their Bitcoin holdings, uh, aren't selling. And so the, the people who, you know, the, I think we've seen the distribution over the last, uh, you know, especially the last several months, but of course over the last uh, year or longer, where uh, uh, Bitcoin has moved from weak hands into strong hands. And uh, quite frankly, there's not too many people who are selling right now. And, and I think that's what we're seeing in the price. Uh, and, and I just, you know, it was funny. It was just a few days ago I, I tweeted a comment that, uh, um, you know, it felt good to see Bitcoin in the 240s again because it hadn't been there in over a month and a half. And, uh and look, here we are at 265 a few days later. It's like, where, where was 250s? You know, we, we blew right past those. So, so let's talk about your conference. Um, it's at the D, except Bitcoin, Las Vegas, October 28th and 29th? Uh, 29th and 30th. So oh, 29th a, and 30th. Don't yeah. get there early. Money 2020, yeah. right? <laughs> right, yeah. So uh, uh, 29th and 30th, uh, uh, Thursday and a Friday. And we we purposely tied that in right after money 2020 and uh, we were a- able to uh, team up with Michael Turpin and his coin agenda and we've combined forces a little bit to to uh, work on that date and so he'll be helping out as well and and bringing in some great people and uh and, and yeah, and, and the thing that uh, uh, I'm excited about, of course, is to go back and show some love to the D uh, Hotel and Casino because they were uh, the first and quite literally still the only hotel in Vegas to take Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, why wouldn't we hold it there? And, uh, and, and you can eat in their restaurants and their gift shops. You can spend your Bitcoin. And, uh, um, you know, it's really cool. I think it's going to feel really good to support them. Yeah, no, uh, you know, I, I think I was your first confirmed speaker for the event. You were, thank uh, you, yes. And who also, we've got Chris Odom going to be there. We've got Michael Turpin, Paul Rosenberg, uh, Ed Moy, the former director of the U.S. Mint. Yes. Uh, Tone Vays, uh, Paul Pewey, CEO of Airbits, who's also been on the uh, podcast before. Uh, Stephanie Murphy, uh, the host of the Let's Talk Bitcoin podcast. Um yeah. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be kind of a fun conference. Oh, plus a special guest that I guess we can't talk about. Right. But, uh, you know, we, we got to dangle the carrot out there somehow, right? That's right. You know, uh, um, you know, this is gonna be a blast. If anyone's uh, anywhere near uh, Vegas, and of course the world is with the uh, airports and that destination, but uh, I think if you jump on a plane and come out, you're not gonna be disappointed. And uh, and hey, it's Vegas. You'll have a fun time too. And our tickets are, you know, they're only ninety nine dollars. Um, and of course, we only take. Bitcoin for payment for the tickets. We don't want any other that uh, those other payments. So Bitcoin only. We, and, what? And, Not like inside yeah. bitcoins or consensus where you have to pay with a credit card. No, to what's that? To attend the Bitcoin know, I, conference. I, like I, what, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, I. I, I I don't use banks that much anymore, you know. So why? Um, why use them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, the tools are here, right? Bitcoin is here. This is what what we're all about. So, so I was looking at the I was looking at the agenda on BitcoinInvestor dot com, and uh, you know, three of the topics that kind of stand out and stand out to me. One was arbitrage, and uh, you were looking for speakers. I, I'd recommended Aaron Zerker from yes. Coinado. Absolutely. Uh, can you talk a little bit, like, what are you going to be talking about in this arbitrage? Sure. So uh, one of the things we've seen in this space is uh, inefficient markets. And for arbitragers or traders or just, uh, you know, entrepreneurs, we call them, um, 
this is a great opportunity because uh, you like inefficient markets, especially if you can figure out how to profit from those. And uh, so Aaron with Coinado has a, a great technology that lets you tap into these different exchanges and profit from that in, a, in an automated fashion, which is kind of cool. And um, and there's a lot of opportunities just at the local level, on the street level, where individual buyers and sellers, I mean, we see arbitrage opportunities like uh, uh, buying on the, the the Coffee Fold app, you know. Yeah, or, 20% or Purse.io or yeah, Venezuela or Argentina. <laughs> absolutely. And, you know, or, yeah, Purse.io. I mean, why pay retail ever again for anything when, when you have Bitcoin? And, and, and the reasons are... There are inefficient markets, and there are people who recognize that Bitcoin's the superior currency, so they're going to pay you a premium, and uh, and that's why you can command a discount when you when you spend Bitcoin. So, um, the, all these uh, great arbitrage opportunities that, that we're yeah, going to be able to talk about. Now, Aaron, Aaron's actually, uh, I think he's a molecular biologist, and he with his Quinado, he does statistical arbitrage between Kraken, Bitfinex, Bitstamp. Uh, looks at all those historical relationships, and that's when it layers on the buys and sells automatically in your account. Uh, so, I mean, he's going to be talking about like purely the trading arbitrage. I mean, we're Absolutely. we're I mean, we'll 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 have other ones like you know offshore banking and living your life on Bitcoin, where you're yes. like yeah. those presentations. I think will be particularly interesting. Like, is offshore banking even still relevant? Right, exactly. Um, <laughs> Which you know, I would contend it's not. Yes. Well, why why use a central third party that's subject to FACTA when you can just right. use Bitcoin? Exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, it's it's really. Uh, interesting and exciting how this event is coming together at this particular point in time where we are coming, uh, you know, it, uh, what I feel is the end of a two year bear market, but you know, who knows how much longer it'll go. But um, I think the stars are aligning now. The infrastructure has been put in place, you know, sure. Bitcoin has warts, uh, but those things uh, are being worked on. And, and there are a ton uh, of network effects. Ab- absolutely. I, I mean, the hashing power alone, I mean, it's incredible to watch that just march higher and higher. Um, it, it, it's really an exciting time, I think. And I, I think I tweeted out the other day that, you know, uh, put your moon, moon suit on and uh, uh, get to the conference because I, I think we're going to have a liftoff. Uh, I mean, we're, we're kind of seeing it already. So how long it'll work, it'll stay, we, you know, no markets go straight up. But, you know, I, I think uh, it feels really good right now. Well, what about like sideways or down markets? Are you going to be teaching people some uh, advanced strategies on how to make money in any type of market? You yeah. know, because, I mean, real real people <laughs> who know how to make money. <laughs> like we don't care whether the price goes up or down or sideways. Like we make money no matter how, how the markets are moving. Absolutely. You know, volatility is your friend, you know, and the trend is your friend. So there's, um, fortunately we're in a, in a, uh, you know, challenges also create opportunities, and the challenges we have in the Bitcoin world now is there aren't very sophisticated trading tools, you know, things like uh, options and uh, futures and, and uh, uh, shorting mechanisms. And so all, all these things are, are you know, there's different companies out there putting them forth, but they may not have the liquidity or the reputation or the trust factor. And so it is challenging to take advantage of these movements, but... You know, every challenge is a new opportunity. So if you can figure out how to solve that either on a technical level or or creating, a, a, you know, an exchange or figuring out how to navigate those waters, uh, you'll, you'll profit handsomely. And we're going to talk about some of those strategies. Well, I like I like Aaron Turker's uh, Quinn Auto. Actually, I've done an interview with them, people who they can use the discount co- code Bitcoin KN. And I think they get a discount on the fees that they pay to him. Um like I, I, I like the statistical arbitrage tools that he's got there, um, and oh, and just in terms of disclosure, like I don't get any, I don't get any dollars from the ticket sales for the conference. I mean, I wish right. I did, but right. yeah, you know, but, it's it's hard. You're probably going to lose money running the conference anyways because it's the first one. But hopefully, we'll have more because like it's, I think it's very important for the community to be getting together and forging the relationships. That's one of the big things we saw at the Scaling Bitcoin Conference in Montreal. Uh, The anthropologist gave a talk about these digital communities and like how they form and how they're successful and like in-person meetings where people are able to come and like talk shop and do business and have those personal relationships. That goes a long way to keeping community together. And, 
And so that's what I really like about kind of the, the lineup of speakers. You know, it's, yeah. it's a lot of people that I know and Hey, you know, I haven't seen them for six months or nine months. Like it's, it'd be good to get together and go trick or treating or something. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh and that was one of the reasons I put this conference together is, um, and, and you'll notice this from conference to conference that there's different themes and there's different, uh, um, uh, um, uh, type of vibes you get from the events. And, and what I really wanted to do with this one is to focus on the core, uh, value propositions of Bitcoin and, and especially, you know, the, 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 uh, the people who kind of helped bootstrap this from the beginning, people like yourself, people like, uh, uh, you know, you just look at our speaker list, uh, just about every one of those has been around a while. And, uh, and they recognized why Bitcoin was created in the first place. It wasn't necessarily to create cheaper and faster payments, although that's a nice side benefit. Um, but it was created in my view. And, and of course, it's all, all, it can be many things to different people. But in my view, it was a way to protect and preserve your wealth. Monetary and sovereignty, kind of, kind of Nick Sasbo's Bit Gold uh, that, paper, like way it. back in the day. Yeah, you know, and, and I was on that early uh, uh, cypherpunk list, and I was involved in the uh, e gold days, and and I remember, you know, e gold was the was the what we thought was the holy grail. It was a it was a currency backed by gold, which was limited in supply, and it was instantly transferable. And uh, I went through that whole experience, and and I thought we had arrived. And of course, we we found out there was a couple fatal flaws built into that system. It was not censorship resistant. <laughs> Absolutely, it wasn't yeah. distributed. Yeah, and it had a, a a backing too. You know, so if so, even if it was uh, uh, um, uh, decentralized in some fashion, if you still had to back it by a commodity like gold or silver, uh, even if you spread it amongst different vaults around the world. All it would take is a bigger army to come in and, and seize those vaults right. and you collapse the currency. So, um, so, so yeah, Bitcoin solves a lot of problems and, uh, I, we're going to focus on that in this, in this event in, you know, what gives it value? Why would it even created in the first place? Um, you know, all these other benefits are nice and they're great and and it's exciting to see them build on top of Bitcoin, but you can't take away that core value that allows you uh, to have your monetary sovereignty, as you say. So. Yeah, and transfer value over a communications channel so that you, yes. you know, it's that that's a very unique property that this particular commodity has. and. Yeah. And from that, we have to figure out how to value it. We got to figure out like when is it undervalued, when is it overvalued, like what are the what are the prices and the charts and the relationships telling us about how we can make money with this? <laughs> Absolutely, like like any market, it's it's never straight up and it's never straight down. We go through periods of uh, uh, mania and despair. So you get uh, overbought uh, situations and you get oversold situations. And uh, the psychology of investing is very real, and it's very tough to overcome. And uh, and you see it. You see it this last uh, two-year drought that we've had in the price. Um, you've seen a lot of people bail out or get disillusioned, and, you, and you've and you seen a lot of them turn on each other, too. I mean, you just look at the Reddit forums and other places. You've, you've got a lot of uh, uh, gnashing and wailing of teeth, you know, or whatever. And, Ble- uh, bleeding the bear. <laughs> exactly. So, so it's been... That's been a little unfortunate because you have a lot of people who who have uh, maybe been less than civil with each other, and uh, but I, I think uh, we'll come through all right, and uh, the market will turn, and I think it's it's on the horizon, and uh, you know well, it's going to be fun. And so. it's uh, at the Satoshi Roundtable. Uh, I was asked to give the toast by Bruce Fenton, and I was you know I told everybody like, hey, look around, like this is the bear market. These are the people that are here. These are the ones that you can trust. Because <laughs> they're here. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> um, when the price turns around and more money starts flowing into the industry, everybody and their dog is going to be a Bitcoin expert. Everybody and their dog is going to have a startup and wanted to get funded. And you're going to have to, especially if you're running a Bitcoin business or you're trying to figure out which ones to actually spend time opening accounts with and establishing those relationships, like you want them to be around. You you want them to not just be fair weather like Bitcoiners. You want them to, like, like, kind of understand that there are going to be ups and downs and waves right. and peaks and troughs to kind of deal with. And so, yeah, it's going to be fun. We're going to going to <laughs> going to going to enjoy Vegas, like going to be fun at the D, support the D for accepting bitcoins. 
Yeah, uh, well, well, what was that other yeah. country, or, I'm sorry, company recently that, well, just this week on Reddit uh, is distancing themselves away from Bitcoin, not going to be a Bitcoin company. Anymore. Oh, I think was Circle, the, I think. When, when that was, well, Circle is one of them, but even more dramatic than that, I think it was the uh, BitReserve guys. Or oh, something. yeah, they changed so, their name to, like, right. Uphold. Or, you, you know what I did? What's that? I, I logged into my BitReserve account and, and, and sent every single penny out of it. Ah. <laughs> every single penny worth of Satoshi is like I withdrew to my Bitcoin address. Well, and, and if you look back at some of the statements from... Uh, like, what are they doing? Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I, I mean, they are they were fair-weather friends of Bitcoin. You know, they saw the trend, uh, they saw uh, something happening, and they jumped in, and, uh, and you know, who knows what they did with it. But, you know, well, they, they raised well, they a lot of money. Well, they burned a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah they, someone else they did raise a lot of money. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's interesting, like, you know, we're, why do people hire Bitcoin, you know, is probably what I'm going to be talking about. Oh, and the other thing is, you know, a lot of these speakers, you know, we're paying our own airfare, our, you know, we're not getting speakers fees, like, it's just as much a kind of a gesture of goodwill to the community for the speakers to be attending them as it is for, you know, the conference organizer to put it together. It'd be nice if they were making money. Hopefully the price will turn and it, they, right. they will, but <laughs> Yes, absolutely, know. and, and uh, I, for one, am definitely grateful that our speakers have been so willing to participate and come and share their ideas, and, and I think it's a testament to the their conviction and belief in this amazing tool that's been gifted to us um, that can really uh, uh, make it a better world for all of us. You know, we have a tool, like you said, monetary sovereignty. We have a way to now protect our wealth and transport it away from harm, uh, it, you know, with a few uh, uh, blips, you know. Quick, quick, yeah. yeah. Oh, and... Uh, since we're on the topic of conferences, I actually just confirmed with Rodolfo I'm going to be speaking at the Latin American Bitcoin Conference in Mexico City, and that's awesome. December 4th and 5th. Um, Great. And this will be the third one. I've, I've spoken at all of them. Uh, I, I think I've, I've done quite a bit to help grow Bitcoin down there in Argentina and Chile and Uruguay and Brazil and whatnot. And so it's, it's exciting to see, I think, like the website traffic for Bitcoin from uh, Spanish-speaking countries, it was 1.1 million visitors in May and 2.3 million visitors in June. And the overall trends are just like really growing very organically, very well. Um, the volumes like on local Bitcoins in these Spanish-speaking right. countries are growing. Yes. Uh, it's very exciting like what's going on in LATAM. And so... You know, going to be going to that, going to be going to this uh, conference in Vegas, 28th and 29th. You can learn more where? Bitcoininvestor.com? Bitcoininvestor.com. And yeah. you can grab your tickets. You can look at our speaker lineup. And uh, downtown, uh, I don't know if, you, you know, for folks listening, if you haven't been to downtown in a while, it's just really a blast. Uh, the new uh, uh, um, uh, video uh, walk that they have down there is incredible and uh, they've got four or five uh, stages uh, where you have live bands going every night um, so if you uh, uh, you know if you're if, if you like to have a good time this is going to be a blast you can uh, go from oil prices are down plane tickets are getting cheap like why not come to <laughs> Vegas right that's right okay well th thanks for being with us Steve Michaels BitcoinInvestor.com we've got the got a conference going on October 28th 29th the, the D in the Vegas 29th and 30th so 29th and 30th I uh, hope to see everybody there we're going to have a lot of fun and there's going to be a special guest that uh I, I think people will not be disappointed with, and it'll be cool to be able to ask the questions of them. So anyways, that'll wrap it up for the podcast today. Th thanks for being with us, Steve. Thank you very much, Trace. Be sure to get a copy of the free Bitcoin Guide at freebitcoinguide.com. Got a question or suggestion? Record your voice at bitcoin.kn. Don't be shy. To help the show, share Bitcoin.kn with friends, post about it on Reddit, and otherwise, spam the interwebs. Your iTunes comments and five-star reviews are very important to us. Please continue tuning in to the Bitcoin Knowledge Podcast, where we release interviews with the top people in the Bitcoin world. Now take some choline and let that Bitcoin knowledge consolidate. Yeah.